Buongiorno a Estancia, I'm Chef Ben, and for today I'm going to cook you up a nice Cinco de Mayo special that you can have at your house and enjoy. Um, there's a decent amount of ingredients here, but most of them you probably already have at home. Um, there will be an ingredients list following all the recipes, as you've seen with all the past ones we've been doing. I really hope you uh, enjoy them so far. Uh, me and the Lifestyle team love putting them together and giving you guys something to do on your downtime. So let's get started first off. We're gonna get into the, what we're doing today is, is the, sorry, I should probably tell you, this is honey chipotle uh, shrimp. And we're gonna do that in some Fiesta tacos. I just put that down there. It's just got some nice, bright, colorful ingredients. We're gonna be doing that with the elotes, a Mexican street corn, and a, fire, a quick fire roasted salsa that you can adapt to your liking, but it's an overall a quick, good product that you'll enjoy pretty much with anything. So I figured you guys already got the rice and the beans down, so we'll move on to that. Again, happy Cinco de Mayo, and happy anniversary to my wife at home watching this. Uh, I'm happy to put this together, and I hope you make it for me when I get home for dinner. So let's get started, everybody. First off, we're gonna do, you got uh, medium to large shrimp. You can do anywhere from 12 to 24. Uh, I put on the recipe 16. What I'm gonna do here first is, is I'm gonna put them in here into a bowl and uh, set this to the side. Next, what I did was, is I got uh, some chipotle peppers. You can find these at any of your local grocers. It doesn't matter what grocer in Arizona, you're guaranteed to find these. Um, just search in the Hispanic section and you'll luckily find those, no problem. Um, so I took two of those out of the can, chopped them up with the juices that were still on it and the seeds. So first off, I'm gonna put that inside, put that over my shrimp. Next up, half a cup of honey. Um, you can change this out. If you don't have honey, you can use sugar, you can use molasses, you can use agave nectar if you like that. That really tastes uh, quite good in it. Um, I just prefer honey. You don't have to use a whole cup, but the sugar is uh, gives it that little uh, sweetness to offset the spiciness. Again, this is a non-spicy dish, so if you're uh, a little afraid of it at home, don't worry about it. It will come out pretty mild. If you like things hot, I definitely uh, Say add more chipotles and maybe some cayenne pepper and some jalapenos or serrano. Uh, next, I'm gonna put in a little bit of uh, olive oil, half a cup or so, just to loosen up the marinade. So my fan just came on and I'm gonna speak up a little bit now. So next, we got a quarter teaspoon of cumin. Put that in as well. One tablespoon of lime juice. Quarter teaspoon of paprika. And a half a tablespoon of salt. Like I said, you can change this up to your liking, however you want. Anything will pretty much go good in here. Especially orange juice. I really like uh, orange juice and chipotles. They go really well together, but for this, I decided to go a, a little bit of a lime juice just because uh, I'm offsetting the honey a little bit too. So, what I'm going to do here is, is I'm just going to mix this up real well. If you want, you can put uh, mix all this up in a gallon size bag. I have to recommend that uh, with a lot of things, especially when you're doing home cooking because this is a lot of dishes for you to have to wash and you don't have to do that. You just put it in the bag, you can seal it up after you pull out the shrimp, toss it, all good to go. So right now I've got that in there. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take this and let it sit in the refrigerator for about, I don't know, one to two hours. Like I said, if you're pressed for time, I think 30 minutes to 45 minutes is plenty of time. So, we'll get rid of that, change my clothes real quick for you. Then we're going to move on to this. Oh, those eggs. So, moving on to the elotes. Uh, the corn is best grilled. Um, a lot of these ingredients on here are grilled like for the salsa and whatnot like that. So it would be good to do them all at the same time if you go that route. Another route that most people do a lot of the time to just cheat the way is either go into the oven or just go into straight up boiling water. So I like to take my corn so it's actually reasonable to manage. If you have sticks and you want to put them in there, you can do that too at the end. But if you're going to put them in the oven and roast them or on the grill, just take a little bit of salt, pepper, and olive oil and rub it on all over the corn. And then uh, place it in your oven, place it on the grill, and just what you're going for is some char on it, some nice some nice taste buds from that grill. So just to show you though, I'm gonna do a couple here in some boiling water, and I just did what I told you, I boiled them salt and pepper, and I threw some in the grill, I just kinda got a quick start. So as our corn's going, what we're gonna do is, is we have to make the basis for the elote. Pretty easy stuff. Most of the stuff, like I said, you have at home. Mayonnaise, half a cup. You can uh, change these to your liking, or however, you know, 
know, like I said, if you want to do all mayonnaise, you can. Most people do do all mayonnaise. Uh, I like to put a little sour cream in things because it does make it stick a little better in the corn, I find. Um, grab the wrong one. So sour cream, got an eighth of a cup here. So now we're just going to mix this up. Mix it real well. Make sure it's uh, nice and thoroughly in there. So now, that's step two. It's super easy, done. We can just set that to the side and we're good to go. So next we're gonna move on to stage three of the elotes, which is, you know, the stuff here. We've got our cotilla cheese. Cheese is classic after the uh, rest in this. So we'll put in some cheese. Garlic, optional. Just took a clove of garlic. It's about a teaspoon, if you will. Add it in there. I just really like the flavor of garlic in my food. So, we've got chili powder. I like to use Guajillo chili powder, New Mexico chili powder. It's really up to you. If you just have dark chili powder, any kind of chili powder, it'll work. Um, you're just realistically going for the color and a little bit of the flavor. Next, we got cilantro. What would uh, Mexican cuisine be without cilantro, or any other cuisine for that matter. I love cilantro in all my foods, whether it's Asian food, American food, anything. Cilantro is always fresh and refreshing. I can use it for breakfast if you have it man. So we're gonna put that in there. Just gonna give that a little jiggle, mix it up, make it all happy. And now all we gotta do is set that aside. Pretty easy. So next. What we're gonna do here is, is we're gonna make ourselves some quick fire roasting salsa. The way to do that is, is if you don't wanna go out and put everything on the grill, I highly recommend just going to the store and buying a couple cans of fire roasted tomatoes. Really easy to buy and all the work's already done for you. You're not gonna get that same chard and great flavor, it's not gonna be all, but if you're trying to save time and get it done, that's the way to do it and you're still getting good results. So we're gonna keep, keep an eye on that corn. It's got about seven minutes until it's about done. But what I did today was, is I took eight tomatoes, cut them in half, rub them with olive oil, salt, pepper, put them on a sheet tray. Because I did not grill them, I oven roasted them. You can do that just the same. There's many ways to pull this off that'll give it that char flavor. I just, at the end, I like to give it a little uh, char with a, tar, a torch, just to give it that extra flavor. Next, what I did was one medium yellow onion. I took that same thing, cut it down into uh, eights, and I rubbed it with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Put it on my sheet tray with my tomatoes. It was all on one, one, one run. Next, what I did was, is same thing. I put one or two jalapenos. If you like it spicier, you can have it. I did put seaweed on there so people, you know, just people can't handle the heat as much as I can. Um, I like serrano peppers. I grew up around my father. He loves serrano peppers. Uh, in Mexican cuisine, he makes everything super, super spicy. So that's kind of how I like with it. But for these recipes, I keep it nice and going down for you. So next, what we're gonna do is, is we got cilantro and all these other things. Like I said, don't worry, there's a recipe attached and you'll be able to look at all this stuff and you should have it. So we're here. So, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna start piling all this in. This is a super, like I said, quick and easy method. I'm just gonna kinda put this cilantro right there in between these onions so it kinda settles down a little bit. And pour a little water in there. You can use stock, vegetable stock, chicken stock, any kind of stock you want if you want extra flavor. Um, today I'm just using water to keep it simple. More, one more thing that you have at home. Um, like I said, I'm gonna add in my uh, jalapenos. I also, when I was roasting off those vegetables in my uh, oven today, what I did was I just threw the gar uh, garlic in there too because roasted garlic is awesome. It has a really good flavor to it. And it's only gonna make your salsa better. Like I said, if you want to skip all these roasting ingredients and stuff too, feel free. Your sauce is going to be fine. It's just not going to have that nice roasted flavor. So next what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to add in a little bit of cumin, just a pinch. I'm going to add in a half a tablespoon of lime juice, half a tablespoon of lemon juice. Now with these, you can alternate. If you like lime and don't really, lemon's not your bag, you can take that and just do all lime juice. You can omit a both if you really want. Like I always say, recipes are guidelines. Make this yours. Make what the flavors that you, you like and are gonna make you feel good at the end of the day. Especially if people usually like it, you like it, it's really good. So next we're gonna do is, is 
quarter cup of olive oil, quarter teaspoon of pepper. I prefer white pepper. Like I said, it just depends on my dishes. Some I use black, some I use white. Uh, for this, I like to use white pepper in it. Um, then we get a quarter tablespoon of salt. We take all those. Take these over to my uh, friendly blender and run them up. So as you can see, salsa's done. This is not your traditional, just straight up red salsa. It has some different colors to it, and that's kind of what I'm doing today with my tacos. Is I'm not trying to make them basic, I'm trying to do something different, maybe a different kind of meal for you to have tonight on Cinco de Mayo. So this is what we got there, but overall, this makes a great dip. This makes a great anything for tacos. Like I said, if you don't want it that fine, like, like this salsa, if you want to chunk your and stuff, you can do that too. You don't have to blend it as much, maybe blend a half of it, and then put in your other, like chop down your ingredients, and then put them in. You can do that as well. Set this to the side. So, next what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a gander at uh, the corn I started roasting. So like I said, I just did a little olive oil, salt and peppers. Roasting achieved, uh, Great things on this. It's gonna have a good flavor. It brings all the natural carbonization in the foods. I'm gonna put it back down there. I'm gonna keep going. So this is the exact same marinade I made earlier. Uh, like I said, I just put it in a different container so that I could uh, give you guys the full effect of what it looks like when it's ready. So we got our uh, saute pan going now. Turn it up a little bit here. Move your pan nice and hot when you cook these. And then I'm going to show you how to put all of this together at one time. Super easy. Like I said, the sauce is already done, so uh, we're one third of the way there. So when you when you have this stuff, I highly recommend draining off these this the shrimp out of here. Just not trying to throw it in the pan because you, you might create some back backsplash. Get yourself, get somebody else. Nobody wants to see that. So I'm just going to drain this out. Nice little drain on it. So, what I have here is a little bit of olive oil. You can use any kind of oil you want. Just enough to pretty much cook the pan. And remember that we didn't put oil in the marinade, so it does already have a little bit of oil in it. Yeah, so let's get cooking. So next, take your uh, shrimp here. Get our pan nice and uh, oiled up. You don't get any sizzle, the pan's not hot enough. We got a little bit, so we're gonna get up. So we're just gonna put that in there, let it go. Next, we're gonna move on to our elotes. So I'm gonna pull out the elotes out of the oven, and then out of here, and then I'll kinda show you how we're gonna do it. Like I said, preferably always use towels or oven mitts, meat, bad habit. Sorry, don't do that at home. Like I said, 
no biggie. But that's what you're going to get. Oops. Well, so we're going to set those to the side because that's good to go. Next, we're going to put together the tacos. They're uh, pretty easy to make. Just going to wait for our shrimp here, which is almost done cooking on this. So, when you're doing these kinds of things, like I said, I keep trying to stress this to everybody. Please try and meal plan. Uh, it really makes your shopping trips less, less orders from Amazon, wherever you're getting your food from. Um, it'll really help out, especially if you have this stuff. Because you're probably gonna have to buy a little more than you need when it comes to shrimp or corn or any of this jazz, maybe tomatoes. Um, that way you can just have another use. Um, this is great for dips, any kind of party planning you may want. I'm gonna knock out a little of this excess juice that came out of the shrimps. So while that's cooking, we have tortillas here. Um, if you're using your grill, hopefully maybe like while you're making all this stuff, you guys are outside relaxing, enjoying maybe what cool time we have left in the afternoons. Um, now, if not, you can put them in the oven or you can put them in the microwave. Either way, it's gonna, uh, just, we just wanna heat them up so they're pliable, so when you plate them, they don't all break and crack on you. No one really likes a, a cold tortilla. So let's get those going. I'm just gonna throw them in the microwave here for on the maybe 30 seconds. And uh, we'll go from there. If we need a little more time, we'll give it to them. So as my shrimp's still cooking here, Slowing down the cooking process a little bit here for me, so. But it will be done in a second. And we will move on. So let's get our tortillas out. Still need uh, another couple seconds because I kind of did a big step. But we can start by doing a few other things. So you don't always have to wait till the last minute to start garnishing and everything. You can kind of start ahead of time if you want. Me, that's exactly what I'm going to do because I got time on my hands. So, you know, put a little uh, fun spin on things, make it your own. I got some ingredients also for the tacos. What we did is, is shredded cabbage. Uh, it's more of an authentic taco that I'm making today. I usually use uh, cabbage and carrots on my tacos at home. I love ice cream lettuce, I love romaine lettuce, any kind of lettuce pretty much. You can use uh, the crisper or the better, but. For me, I like cabbage, it holds up well, and it's got a good flavor and a lot of nutritional value. Uh, some other things I'm gonna do, a little more uh, avocado, some more cotilla cheese. So those are uh, just little things that uh, I wanna put on mine. You can put whatever you want. So we got about one minute left here on our shrimp. Put a little more of this juice out that's coming out. Kind of get that cook time up a little bit. Like I said, this usually takes about, I don't know, four to five minutes, depending on the heat of your pan and how much you have in it. Like right now, my pan's a little overloaded, so it's taking a few moments longer. Pretty much when you're cooking shrimp, you just want to get that uh, clear clearness gone out of it, just till it's uh, nice and white, a little bit firm. Uh, so the shrimp's nice. Looking really nice and tight right now. It's firmed up a little bit. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna go ahead and make our tacos. What I'm gonna do is, is line up a couple of the warm tortillas right here. You can do it a couple of different ways, but we'll just start off like this. You can put as many of these little guys on here as you want. You can make it fall all over the place. You can keep it nice and pretty. We'll just do about four. That should set perfect in there. So what we'll do next is, is Add a little bit of a cabbage. If you don't want to use cabbage, like I said, you can use any kind of lettuce. It'll work pretty good. I mean, besides like mixed greens or something, um, that'll put it wilt up really fast. But romaine, iceberg, all good stuff. Got some carrots, like I said, optional. Use what you like, as always. Everybody pretty much loves avocado. They're really, really good for you. So, highly recommend those. Especially, it goes really good with uh, Mexican food. 
We're gonna finish it with a little bit of a cotillo. A little bit of a fresh lime juice. And I like cilantro a lot, so I'm always going to throw in a little bit of an extra cilantro just for that extra uh, freshness kick at the end. We grab a spoon and finish it with a little bit of salsa because we made it, so we should use it. Like I said, you can, any of these things like the salsa and whatnot like that, this, this will hold for about two weeks in your fridge, give or take, because of all the acidity in it. Um, otherwise, we got two nice tacos right here. I'm gonna plate these up with our nice elotes. Turn that like that, do a little press. You know, you can throw some things on here for garnish if you want, whether it be limes, lemons, like you'll see right here, the two I've already presented for you. But otherwise, there you go. You got honey chipotle uh, shrimp fiesta tacos with elotes and a fire roasted salsa. Trilogy, thank you for uh, everything you do. Being you, uh, thank you for the to the Lifestyles team uh, for letting me do this. Happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. Enjoy everything. Be safe. Be strong. And we can't wait to see you back here at the club. Take care. Enjoy.